No, hombre, pero es a la hora que, que al menos yo no tengo nada que hacer. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening. So we are in session number two. We are going to begin with the session number two of this last week. Uh, after this session, we are just going to have two more days and we are going to complete the course. So we are going to begin with this, um, with this session and with the information that we have for today. Because we are going to end with the topic of the future, we are going to continue with that part. And yesterday we were talking about a future simple and a future continuous. That is the last uh, thing that we were like um, talking about uh, yesterday. So we are going to continue with that part because we have more information about the uh, future continuous. Um, and also we have an exercise, a short ex exercise that we are going to complete uh, right now. So we are going to continue with that part because we have two more tenses that we need to uh, talk about or make the review of the information that we have in there. So we are going to begin sharing the screen and we are going to continue. Así que vamos a continuar con el trabajo que estuvimos haciendo ayer. So let me see. But I mean, it's going to look like kind of a strange. Because it's going to have the, the full thing and I don't want the full things to share, but we are going to work in that in that case. I don't know what he's presenting, but I don't have that screen. Okay, let's see. No, it is not possible. So give me a moment because uh, it, it doesn't want to share the screen because it doesn't appear the document, just the screen. So I'm going to uh, close the document and open again. So give me a moment. But right now we are going to talk about just to explain something about the future continuous. And uh, the thing that we were talking about yesterday is just the formula or the way in which we can create um, the sentence. But now we are going to uh, know how to use that structure or how to use the future continuous. So in this case, we have like general information or general ideas about the, the future continuous. And we can say that generally we use the future continuous referring to future actions. Excuse me, teacher. Se le escucha cortado. No sé si solo soy yo o será que, que sí se le está escuchando. Ya sí se escucha Okay, right now this is the, just the, this is the only option that I had. So it's because uh, it sounds like 
very bad the, the, the audio is because I was like charging the document and uh, opening the browser and all of that thing. So in that case, I, I think that is why it sounds kind of weird. But I was telling that this structure is going to be, uh, or we are going to use it for um, actions in progress. So we are talking about things that are happening in this moment, but also it's going to happen in the future. So in that case, there are actions that begin in a specific time, maybe in the present or maybe in the past, but it's going to continue in the future. And uh, for example, we can say this time next week, I will be sunbathing in Sardinia. So in that case is something that uh, we are going to do in the future, but maybe we are in that place already. So like in that case is something in progress. Estamos hablando de acciones que, que están en progreso, que um, ya comenzaron, que no han terminado y que van a pasar en un tiempo en el futuro. Así como el ejemplo de this time next week, a, a esta hora, la próxima semana, yo voy a estar haciendo algo en específico. Then we use this tense for suppositions about what's going to happen. For example, I guess you will be feeling thirsty after working in the sun. Vamos a hablar también de lo que son las suposiciones. No es uh, like in the other tense in which we are like uh, talking about beliefs. In this case, it's something that um, a supposition es una suposición de lo que podría pasar. Como en el ejemplo de yo creo, I guess you will be feeling thirsty. Yo creo, yo considero que te vas a sentir sediento after working in the sun, después de estar trabajando en el sol. Yo veo la acción y asumo que va a pasar eso en el futuro. Then, for what concerns in the interrogative form, we use future continuous to ask a polite and an information about the future. In this case, we are going to use this structure for polite request. We need to know something uh, we need an information and we are going to use this kind of a structure. Así que vamos a hacer preguntas en esta estructura para tener información, pero eh, lo vamos a hacer para que suene un poco más como eh, formal, un poco más serio o más amable. That is the thing that we need to do with this kind of questions. For example, will she be going to the party tonight? Will she be going to the party tonight? Ella estará yendo a la fiesta esta noche. Then we can also use this tense for certain progressive events that will take place in the future. When he is in Australia, he, he will be staying with friends. En este caso es para um, ciertas o ciertos eventos en el futuro que van a tomar obviamente lugar en el, en el futuro, no simplemente acciones que llevan un progreso, sino acciones que meramente van a pasar en el futuro, como en el ejemplo, cuando él esté en Australia, él se va a quedar o se va a estar quedando con sus amigos. Then we have, uh, we can, with the adverb still, we are going to use the adverb still, Future continuous is used referring to already happening events that will go on for a certain time in the future. Vamos a utilizar el adverb still, que lo podemos traducir como aún, eh, cuando nos vamos a referir a eventos que ya están pasando, pero que van a llevar un cierto tiempo en el futuro. Ejemplo, tomorrow, he will still be suffering from this cold. Mañana, él todavía o aún va a estar sufriendo por esa gripe. Porque son secuelas, ¿no? So, I'm going to write the uh, way we can use the uh, future continuous in this case. And you are going to see the same examples that I uh, was telling you. So, we are going to have one, two, three, five things, five important things about the uh, 
future continuous and five different examples about that situation that I was explaining. So I'm going to write it. So let's begin to see what are the uses for the future continuous.
So here in the document, you are going to find the five different things that we can uh, or that we need to learn about the uh, future continuous. And also you're going to find the five different uh, examples that we have here. So in this case, I'm going to mark the examples just for um, to make easier to find them when you are reading the information that you have here. So we have here the examples of these uses, or in this case, the things that we need to know about the future continues. So remember that you are, we are using a specific structure for this kind of sentence. We have three, then we have here number four. And then we need number five. this one so there you can find the examples mark on the document so then uh, i have a uh, short exercise in which you are going to see some um, like a specific time and we are going to say some uh, sentence using that time that I'm going to write in in the document. So the activity is what will you be doing? What will you be doing? Vamos a hacer una pequeña actividad de qué vamos a estar haciendo. Y I have three, six, nine, nine different times. In this case, you can use a uh, real situations and also you can create um, like something from your imagination uh, with this kind of time. Tenemos nueve tiempos diferentes eh, y en muchos de los casos podemos utilizar situaciones reales que tal vez nosotros vayamos a estar haciendo en ese determinado momento o Podemos crear una oración imaginaria de qué nos gustaría nosotros estar haciendo en ese determinado momento. Así que voy a escribir la actividad con la pregunta y los tiempos. Y voy a escoger a una persona que es la que va a comenzar eh, diciéndonos qué va a estar haciendo a ese tiempo. Luego esa persona va a escoger a otro de los participantes. O sea, no lo voy a escoger yo, sino que se van a ir escogiendo entre ustedes para decir qué van a estar haciendo. Acuérdense que tenemos una estructura, así que pueden utilizar la estructura del future continuous to uh, say the things that we are going to do in a specific time in the future. So first, I'm going to write the activity with the times, and you can think about one activity that you are going to do in that specific time. And then I'm going to choose the first one that is the person that will tell the uh, actions, and then that person is going to choose the next participant. So let's see.
So here we have nine different times, nine different uh, moments. And we are going to think about what are the actions or the things that we are going to do in that specific time. We have in five minutes, but remember, you have two options. One is to create a real sentence of the things that you are doing right now, or you can create a like, um, different situation in which you may be something that you like or you are like thinking about to do in a specific time, maybe the next week or something like that, but in five minutes, not just to have the session or the class or something like that. We can uh, talk about another kind of actions. Then two hours at 9 p.m., but you know that right now we are in, in that time and that is uh, past time, but you can uh, think about that you are like, at 5 p.m. and someone asks you, what are you going to do? Or what will you be doing at 9 p.m.? So you can create uh, a situation also. This time tomorrow, on Saturday morning, next Friday, in two weeks, next month, and at midnight on New Year's Eve. Así que tenemos nueve momentos. Eh, podemos crear situaciones imaginarias o situaciones reales. Ahí es, depende de ustedes. Y vamos a eh, especificar o decir qué vamos a estar haciendo en cinco minutos, en dos horas, a las nueve, eh, a esta hora mañana. Que igual podemos cambiar el hecho de que vamos a estar teniendo una sesión más de, eh, de inglés y poner otro tipo de acciones que nos gustaría estar haciendo en ese momento. O simplemente una acción diferente. Eh, luego eh, el sábado en la mañana, el sábado por la mañana, que vamos a estar haciendo el sábado por la mañana, el siguiente viernes, en dos semanas, en un mes, y eh, a la medianoche del New Year's Eve, del año nuevo. So, I will give you two minutes, just two minutes to think about different situations, depending on the, the nine different times that you have in the, in the table. And after those two minutes, I will say a name. And that is the first person that is going to begin with this activity. Tienen dos minutos a partir de ahora para pensar en algunas actividades que les gustaría realizar en esos tiempos en específico. Y luego ya voy a escoger quién va a comenzar y esa persona va a decidir quién continúa. So, two minutes right now.
for the first participant. And then you are going to continue choosing the other uh, participants of the session. So let's see, the first person to say, in this case, I will tell you the time and the, the first person is going to be, it's going to be Emerson Mejia. Tell me teacher. Okay, what will you be doing on Saturday morning? On Saturday morning, I will be sleeping. Good, very good. So now Emerson, you can choose <laughs> the person that you want to continue. You can ask the time, but you can tell the name. Usted va a escoger la siguiente persona y le va a decir el tiempo y así vamos a continuar con los demás. Okay. <laughs> eh, Brian, is ahí. Isaac, perdón. Hola, se me dio. No. Brian. No, I think he is not. Another one. Uh, Santiago. Okay, Santiago. I'm here. Hello. Tell me, Emerson. Santiago. What is your question? Well, tell me. What will be doing? And uh, next Friday. Well, let me see. But I will be. I will be drinking beer. <laughs> Emerson, are you there? He's gone. I'm here. Next okay. person. You can hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Now, Santiago, it's your time to choose another of the participants. Okay. I want to choose to... Cesar. Cesar Alexander. Hello. Cesar, what will you be doing uh, in two weeks? Hola. Hola, ¿qué pasó? La pregunta para vos sería, what will you be doing in two weeks? ¿Qué estarás haciendo en dos semanas? Nothing. <laughs> too easy, too easy. Eternal vacation. <laughs> okay, Cesar, but it's valid. Don't worry. Um, Cesar, you can choose another of the participants to be the next one. Coge a alguien más, César. A Lely. <laughs> ya sabía. <laughs> Which time? Ok, what time? Qué tiempo? Hacerle la pregunta. 
What will be doing, Cesar? What will you be doing? Uh huh. In, in, in five minutes. Saturday morning. On Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Um, I will working at home. Oh, good. Working Saturday? Yes. On Sunday. Yeah. Oh, the week. Trabaja hasta domingo, Aleli. Yes. Es cuando más trabajo, más money, cabal, porque fin de semana, hijo. Okay. Okay. Um, another one. Um, Laura. Laura Michelle. Uh, what will you be doing at midnight on New Year's Eve? Okay, uh, at midnight, I will be hugging my family. Very good. Next one. Um... Emerson, what will you be doing uh, next month? I'm sorry, Emerson. Other time. Excuse me. Congratulations, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you repeat, please? What will you be doing at the next month? The next month. Yes. Octoberfest. It's my birthday. Oh, oh good. good. Hey! Oh, happy birthday hey. to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> no me acordaba, era mi cumpleaños. Oh, wow. Seri one. Seri one. The October. No, grosero. Twenty nine. Bueno, voy a elegir entonces. Elijo a. Fátima. Fátima Esmeralda. Hi. Ay, hoy sí enciende la cámara, César. <laughs> Fatima, what will you be doing at midnight on the New Year's Eve? Eve, Eve pardon. At the New Year's at Eve. Midnight, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Noche buena, 24. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. <laughs> New Year. I will be. How do you say compartiendo con mi familia? <laughs> Having a good time. Having. Mm -hmm. Having what, teacher? A good time, teniendo un buen momento, compartiendo un buen momento con la familia. With my family. Having a good time. Teacher, in this case, I, I can sharing, sharing. Yes, you can share, but... Um, sharing. Yes, sharing, because you are using the ING in this case, but it's like, you can say also a spending time or spending some time with the family okay. or sharing good memories or having a good time. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. So, uh, Fatima, one more. Uh, quiero ver. Marvin, Marvin Fernando. Fernando. Hi. Okay. Marvin, Marcel, um, what will you be do doing um, 
in the next month. In the next month, mm -hmm. uh, I will play in tennis with my friends. Good, very good. Okay, thank you everyone for your participation. So in this kind of question, we can see that um, maybe we need to think about the actions or the activities that we are going to perform in the future because um, in some cases when you ask someone, what are you going to do? Or in this case, well, we uh, you'll be doing the next uh, month sometimes we don't know exactly um, the actions or the things that we are going to perform in that time maybe if you ask someone for the next uh, week you can say ah i have a celebration i have a lot of work to do um, i need to buy something or something like that but when you ask for a, almost a long time or we can say a long time we are not like having a, a specific thing in which we're going to spend our time. In the case of someone that has a, his or her birthday, it's a different thing because you know that you are going to do something. Maybe you are going to go out a, to eat dinner with your friends or you are going to have like um, a small meeting or something like that. But it's in this case, we need to think about this, the action that we are going to perform in the future. So in this activity, we end the part of the, the future continuous and we are going to see the other two because we have like, let me see. Yes, we have a couple of minutes to continue with the other two. In that case, we're just going to have short information about the future perfect, that is the number three. And then we're going to have in the number four, future perfect continuous. So we're going to have short information and some examples of those tenses because we have a couple of minutes to complete the session. So let's see the number three, because in this case we have just two, that is the present, I mean, the future simple and the future continuous or progressive in this case. So we are going to see number three, that is the future perfect. And for this one, it says that um, it's used to talk about a complete action in the future. So in, imagine this, you are going to talk about a complete actions in the future. We are in the present time, but we are going to talk about a completed actions in the future. And how is that possible? So we are going to see how can we talk about a um, completed action in the future when we are in a present time. So we are going to see uh, the form and some examples of this uh, tense. And also we are going to talk about the uses and some examples. So let's see.
So for the form of this tense, we have that we are going to use again, will or want, because in this case we have positive and negative statements. And we are going to use have plus the past participle of the verbs. In this case, remember that you need to have your, um, your verbs in a place in which you can use the list in the moment that you need to have this kind of sentence. So remember that regular past participles end in ed and the irregular past participles don't follow the common conjugation pattern. So in this case, it changed the form of the verb. So in this case, we're going to use will or want plus have and a past participle. So in this case, we are just uh, going to use have and remember that in this case, you are using will as an auxiliary. And when you have these auxiliaries, you are not going to change the uh, way you are uh, using the have. In this case, you are not going to write has for the third person. Así que, como estamos utilizando el auxiliar will, Acuérdense que cuando utilizamos los auxiliares, nuestro have, en este caso, no va a cambiar. No le vamos a escribir has a la tercera persona. En este caso, siempre va a ser will have. Ahí ya no vamos a tocarlo porque el auxiliar es el que va a cumplir esa función. Así que en este caso, will have para todos. Won't have para todos. Y sin cambiar. Lo único que va a cambiar es el verbo porque los verbos regulares terminan en ed, la mayoría o en ied, en, esa, en eso, eh, así. Y los que son irregulares, ustedes saben que cambian su forma de escritura. Pero por eso, ¿verdad? Necesitamos tener nuestras listas de verbos ahí, ¿verdad? Cerquita para siempre estarlas utilizando. So, let's see some examples. So here we have positive, negative, and a question. In this case, we are using the same example. In positive, I will have finished my homework. And in negative, you won't have finished your homework. Or in this case, remember that you can use will not. You will not have finished your homework. And in question, will he have finished his homework? In this case, remember that you are going to change um, like, the structure of the position of the words to complete the question. So we're going to see three different uses that we can give to this tense. We are going to see the uses. And we are going to see number one, and it says an action that will be completed before a specific time in the future. An action that will be completed uh, before a specific time in the future. For example, next September, we will, have we will have been married for 15 years.
So in this case, we have three uh, different uses. One is an action that will be completed before a specific time in the future. The second one is used by or by the time to mean some time before. And in the last one, use in, in a day's time, in two weeks time, in three months time, et cetera, to mean at the end of this period. Si podemos nosotros identificar que en este caso estamos hablando de un tiempo en específico y que algunas de estas acciones se van a completar justo antes de que llegue ese momento. Como en el primero de el próximo septiembre vamos a estar cumpliendo, vamos a haber estado casados por 50 años. Todavía no ha llegado el momento, pero estamos hablando de que va a llegar en ese momento. Luego, en el siguiente, donde vamos a eh, especificar que va a pasar algo un poco antes de que, de que llegue la, el momento específico, es I will have finished this report by the time you are home. Yo habré terminado este reporte o este eh, documento para el tiempo en el que tú llegues a casa. So, we are telling that in the moment that the person is uh, coming to home, I'm going to finish my job. And in the third one, eh, usam, usamos esas expresiones para eh, referirnos a un tiempo, ¿verdad? O en ese tiempo específico, en un periodo de, de, de tiempo, como lo estamos especificando en el uso número tres. Por ejemplo, in three years time, en tres años, yo habré completado mi eh, licenciatura in this case, because we are talking about degree at the university. So now I have like two years or three years um, studying or something. In, in three years time, en tres años, yo habré completado la licenciatura. But we are talking about the future, completed action in the future. And we have four minutes and I'm just uh, going to explain a little bit about the future perfect continuous. And I'm going to write all the information in the document. So you are going to uh, find in tomorrow, but now I'm just going to explain in these four minutes that we have in the session. So for the future perfect continuous, we use this structure or this tense to show that something will continue up until a particular event in the future. En este caso, vamos a utilizar el future perfect continuous para mostrar que una acción va a seguir pasando en el futuro hasta que llegue alguna situación que haga que eso cambie. Si no llegara a ocurrir ninguna situación, pues va a seguir pasando esa misma acción. Pero si llega otra acción, otra situación que lo cambie, ahí se detiene. We normally use it to emphasize how long something will have been happening For. Esto va a utilizarse para hacer un énfasis en qué tanto tiempo o cuán largo ha sido esa acción o en cuánto tiempo se ha llevado a cabo. And we have, again, three different uses. We have to show that something will continue up until a particular event in the future. For example, in October, I will, be, I will have been working here 14 years. Como estamos hablando de acciones que se van a llevar a cabo en el futuro, podemos expresar eh, que algo va a continuar pasando. Por ejemplo, en octubre yo habré estado trabajando aquí por 10 años y como no me han despedido, pues la situación va a continuar en el futuro. Si llegaran a despedirme, pues en ese caso se termina ahí. Then, to show something finished just before another time action para mostrar que algo terminó justo antes de que llegara otro tiempo. Esta es la causa y el efecto. When I arrive, I'll have been working all day, so I'll be tired. Cuando yo llegué o cuando yo llego, habré estado trabajando todo el día, así que yo voy a estar muy cansado. And the last one with time expressions by plus then, tomorrow, next year, etc. by the time, when. By the time we arrive, we will have been traveling for 15 hours. Vamos a escribir expresiones de tiempo como lo es by, then, tomorrow, next year, by the time, or when, 
y tenemos el ejemplo, para el tiempo en el que lleguemos, habremos estado viajando por 15 horas. But all this information you are going to find it in the document um, because I'm going to add it tomorrow. So you are going to have that last part that is the uh, future perfect continuous, the uses and some examples because it's time to end the session and we are ending a session number two and we are just going to have two more sessions, two more days to complete this course. So I wish you a very good night and see you tomorrow in session number three of this last week. So have a really good night and see you. Bye. Good night. 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 Good